Uh, let me thank both Senator Klobuchar and Senator Kennedy uh, for their good faith work on this important topic. Uh, I find myself genuinely conflicted on this bill. Uh, I think it is endeavoring to solve a, a real problem. Uh, I think local journalism faces enormous pressures and threats, and I think big tech behaves like an angry giant squashing the Lilliputians before it. Uh, I also think when it comes to media, local journalism is far more likely to actually practice journalism, to report on facts, to actually describe to viewers or readers what has happened. I think much of our national media has become wildly politicized on both sides. And many of the national media platforms operate as partisan propaganda outlets. Uh, I'd like to see local media expand and proliferate because I think our democracy does better when we have genuine debate uh, from both sides or even more sides than that. Uh, at the same time, I, I do think the concerns that have been raised by Senator Lee and others are, are real. Uh, and I am not at all convinced that this bill will solve the problem it is intending to solve. And I have at least some concern that the bill may exacerbate the problems uh, that it is ostensibly created to solve. When I look at big tech and when I look at media, I think the single greatest threat we have to free speech is not even the market power of big tech, but it is the wanton abuse of power and the blatant censorship from big tech. Several senators today have said, well, there have been allegations of censorship. Let's be clear, these are not mere allegations. It is unequivocal that big tech is actively censoring speech it disagrees with and is doing so in a wildly partisan manner. We can point to a couple of very specific examples that are recent and in the news. The Biden White House explicitly asked Twitter, will you please ban Alex Berenson, a former reporter for the New York Times. Now, it used to be that, that Democrats thought the New York Times was a reputable organization. I have some real questions about that, but the fact that Berenson was a New York Times reporter ought to at least have some modicum of credibility that he's a journalist. But in the midst of COVID, Berenson dared question the orthodoxy that was demanded from this administration. The Biden administration demanded a big tech silence this voice because we must have no dissent. And what did Twitter do? happily complied and said he is banned. Now, mind you, Berenson turned around, sued Twitter, and won. They settled the lawsuit, they reinstated him, and Twitter publicly admitted that what he was saying was not misinformation. Anyone who cares about free speech ought to be troubled with this White House or any others directing big tech Silence journalists who are saying something I don't like. It's not just the Biden White House. We also have had recent revelations that right before the 2020 election, the Federal Bureau of Investigation asked Facebook, take down any stories about the Hunter Biden laptop. Now look, pause for a second. I get their partisan differences between both sides. And in an election, Republicans like things that help Republicans, Democrats like things that help Democrats. That's the nature of politics. Anyone remotely concerned about free speech or civil liberties ought to be concerned about the FBI asking big tech weeks before an election to take down information because it's politically harmful to the party they want to prevail. And by the way, it's worth underscoring, we now know the Hunter Biden laptop story was true. Not only was it not misinformation, not only was it not Russian misinformation, which is what the FBI falsely claimed, 
It was true, it was accurate, it was real. Nonetheless, both Facebook and Twitter said take it down, and they demanded of the New York Post, they deplatformed a newspaper founded by Alexander Hamilton with the fifth largest circulation in the country. They deplatformed the New York Post as long as they kept it up. Now, if you care about journalism, big tech operating at the behest of the FBI to interfere in an election ought to scare the hell out of you. So, when I look at this question, what is preeminent to me is whether this bill is going to increase or decrease censorship. I've got a series of amendments which, which I intend to offer this morning. And whether I vote yes or no on this bill is going to depend on what happens on those amendments. And I will say this to the authors of the bill. For most of us here, this is not our first rodeo. We've been through a markup. I understand often the authors of a bill circle the wagons and say, okay, any amendment that does anything significant, we're against. We got our bill, we want to force it through. And it's not that hard to count noses in this markup. I think right now, if this bill comes to a vote, you get most or all of the Democrats. Maybe one or two exceptions, but you're going to get almost every Democrat. And you'll get at least a handful of Republicans. That'll be enough to pass it. That will get over the majority threshold. So that if the objective today is to move this bill out of committee, you probably got the votes. That being said, I think whether or not the authors of this bill take the amendments I've authored, whether or not the authors of this bill are willing to do something meaningful to prevent partisan censorship and silencing of free speech online and in the media, I think we'll determine whether this bill has any realistic prospect of passing on the floor. Because a narrow vote out of committee, I think, is extraordinarily unlikely to actually pass into law on the floor. So I hope we can actually agree that free speech matters and come together on it. And, and I suppose when we move to the amendments, we'll see if we can. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.